heaven help me to have faith above fear and trust in you. In the eye of the storm, I know there is another in the fire. It's another way of hearing that no matter where you are, Jesus is with you. And we always need reminders of that. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Well, I have a couple little updates. Um, our goal is to have our first service next week, next Sunday the 16th at the church building. Of course, everything won't be done, but we'll still have the main room to have service in. Um, just to let you know, next month is the first payment on the loan, which is a $84,000 loan that we pay every month. I'd like to say it's paid off already. However, we'll get there. <laughs> We do have insurance on our building. We have the electricity and all that put in our name of the church. Uh, right now we do not have internet, but we will be having that very soon because we'll be needing that too. So, got a lot of stuff done, got a few things to go, but at the same time, where we're supposed to be. You know, God's got our plan. And I was telling somebody just the other day that this has been a very quick situation for us. I mean, we've had our church for less than a year and a half. It took, what, a month and a half for everything to go through to buy the church. This is not done by us. This is God's hand because things that move smoothly and quickly, that's God doing it so we know we're on the right path. And it's grace to you from our God, from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ and everything that they take us through. We're so grateful. Thank you, Lord. Have a couple little funnies. How do we know that God likes baseball? <laughs> I do like cheesy jokes. He started everything in the beginning. <laughs> Noah wanted to bat in the big game, but he couldn't. Why? He was always on deck. <laughs> you know, those kids' jokes are really more entertaining than a lot of adult jokes. <laughs> and now that I've mentioned with the tie, uh, the cost of the building and everything, um, all our ties that we bring in is what we use to pay on the loan for the building and all the expenses that come with it. So in Psalms 126, 3 through 6, the Lord has, great done, has done great things for us. And we are filled with joy. Restore our fortunes, Lord, like streams in the Negev. Those who sow with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with them. And as we all know, God does everything for us. He, as the song says, He knows the next day. He knows what's going on. We follow His steps. And he just asks of us, 10% of our gifts, our time, our love, whatever it is that we're able to do. But we have to remember to keep it in joy. If you do it when you're not doing it joyfully, you're not doing yourself any favors. You're not going to receive God's blessings for what you're doing and giving if you're not doing it in the joy of your heart. And it's our part that he asks. Not that he needs it, because, you know, he, he doesn't need it. I don't know where he would spend it in heaven. I don't think he has to go to the gas station for anything. <laughs> but this is where you have to put your faith into action and trust in the Lord. So you can either mail it to the P.O. Box 893 in Fargo, North Dakota, 58107. We now have a physical church building, 227 Main Avenue, West Fargo, 58078. You can text it, 833-245-5130, or you can go to the website, churchofgodsword.org. There's a link there as well. We'll update this as well so that you can see that. So there's, <coughs> there's many ways to give, and we appreciate all the gifts that we have been given. So and today, we're going to talk a little about anxiety. Now, I thought this church, this church, <laughs> this shirt was fitting because anxiety is the devil. Anybody who deals with anxiety and depressions and things, and most, a lot of people do, I figure, you know what, we're gonna stomp that devil back down, so I thought this shirt came in perfect for this today. <laughs> and it's quite comfy. <laughs> so, 
So anxiety, it's a fear or nervousness about what might happen. Apprehensive, uneasiness. So I did some research on it. It's really quite astonishing. In the United States, 40 million adults have anxiety. Many of them start around the age of 21. That's terrifying, really. And it cripples people. I mean, most common cause of workplace disability. And there's many much younger that have it, too. But this was when I saw 40 million adults. That's not including anybody else and the children. It's awful. So we have to do our part to dose, to dose it with the Lord's word, bring in the goodness of the Lord to push that out. Because once you get that in there and you push it out, there's no room for any anxiety or evil or ugly. So it brings us to Deuteronomy 31.6. Be strong and courageous. It's easier said than done without a doubt. But keep your faith in it and it definitely helps it. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you or forsake you. Now, to be strong and courageous is not being back there like this. Looking to see what's coming. What's out there? What might happen? Put on that equipment or armor. Be proud. Walk out there. You face it because the devil doesn't have any power over you. You have power and authority over him by Jesus being in you to kick him out of there. You have to be strong and keep confident that I have this power. This anxiety is not going to be part of me. Be strong. In Psalm 139, 23 through 24, Search me, God, and know my heart. He knows your heart, but you open it up and you ask him to come in and clean it all out. There is the first step to being strong and courageous. Because he's coming in and he's cleaning up and he's showing you how it's going to be. Know my anxious thoughts. He knows them. He's just waiting for you to reach up to him and say, Lord, Take this. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in my or in the way everlasting. I have to say, with this purchasing this new building, cleaning up this new building, and all the things that go with whatever you do, I've had a couple of thoughts of anxiety, like, oh, can I do this? I'm human. If I don't have these things going on, then I don't have a big enough dream. And I get bigger dreams coming because, as I've said, it won't be long. We're going to be having more than one service on a Sunday and have to open it up for a weekend evening or a weekday. We're not going to have just a simple 10 o'clock Sunday service anymore. It's going to get bigger and better. And eventually we're just going to need another building. From the very beginning, I've been saying, we're going to get a building. So we had the picture of that building, and then I had the picture of the chairs that you're sitting on. I kept them taped on the door, side by side, confirming, we have this. God wouldn't have given us 100 chairs just to sit in the shed. We wouldn't have found this building with the cross in it, with God saying, hello, here I am, come get me. Oh, well, that was step one. And I'm really excited for the next step. And I have to say, it kind of gets me shaking once in a while. But that's good because then I know I'm doing something right because the devil's trying to shake me down. And I got God sitting down there right there. I got gotcha. you. We're going to do it. I got it. So we're moving forward. We haven't even gotten in there yet, and I've got us moving out already. So let's just go for this ride. It's going to be even more fun. In Proverbs 15, 15. All of the day or all the days of the oppressed are wretched, but the cheerful hearts has a con the cheerful heart has a continual feast. Happiness and joy is actually more contagious and addictive than anything else because that's God. He's feeding us, filling us with the love, the joy, the happiness. As they say, it takes more muscles to frown than it does to smile. You know, if you think about it, that's obviously something God has planned because 
He likes us happy and smile, so why have to work harder to do it? Instead of, yeah. Hmm, interesting how it works, but it is. So to be joyful, happiness, even when, not even when, especially when things look bad, find one little joyful thing. If you feel like the end of the world is coming, think of that one thing that's always there to keep you smiling happy. The love of your life, an event as a child, favorite thing to do. Find one thing to get that little flicker going and you get bigger and bigger from there. Doesn't matter how bad it looks, God is going to bring it brighter. That's what he does. That's what he loves to do for us. In Matthew 6, 25 through 27, in Jesus' words, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life. What will you eat or drink? Or about your body? What will you wear? You know, there are too many people that are too concerned about having a new outfit every week, dressing to the nines. They're hiding. They have so much going on inside that they're afraid to let people see beyond all this. Put it aside. God has got it. It is not, is not life more than food, the body more than clothes. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store any, away in any barns, and yet your Heavenly Father feeds them. He feeds us too. We don't look at it that way. We look at it as we work, we get money, we go to the store, we buy groceries, and we continue and continue and continue that pattern. Okay, first of all, you get money because God sets it up to have money. God has grocery stores for us to be able to go get groceries. God has appliances for us to be able to make our food. We do the daily things, but God supplies it all. He feeds us just as he does the animals. They fly around and they have to hunt it down, but it's there. We drive around and we hunt it in the store, but it, it's there. Except for recently with COVID, it's harder to find things. However, it has not stopped us from finding something else even. Sometimes that's a good thing because you find something new, even at a better price. Are you not much more valuable than they are? Yes. We have the souls and the spirits. The birds have the feathers and the wings. But God loves us all, including these beautiful creatures he's created for us to enjoy by watching. It is nature's television if you're sitting at a window. Sitting, there's better words, sitting at the window. I mean, we sit there at the kitchen window. I saw a cardinal the other day. See the squirrels chasing around, the birds when they play, starlings. We had a whole bunch of them in there last summer. Like There's had to have been seven, eight of them in one little bird bath and just splashing around. It was crazy, just water everywhere, and it was beautiful. So God gives us these animals for us to view and enjoy, for his beauty of vision as well. But you are more valuable than they. Can any one of you be worrying at a single hour to your life? As a matter of fact, it subtracts more than just hours from your life. It subtracts days and years. And as the Bible tells us in John 10, 10, the devil only comes to kill, steal, and destroy. You let him in there and start with that negative and the fear and the worry and the anxiety. And that's what it's starting. Let's put the brakes on. He can't have any more of that. There's that little bit of joy coming back. Find that joy. Turn off that oh, ugly attitude. Matthew 6, 28-33, again in Jesus' words. And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers in the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like these. I mean, Solomon had it all. He had total closets of servants to bring him everything. He couldn't even reach up to that. If that is how God's clothes the grass of the field, which are here today and tomorrow thrown into the fire. I mean, 
they were made to look beautiful and then to be heat and to cook with. It was to view a joy and a purpose. He will not, or will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Has he ever left you naked? Other than when you're born or in the shower? No, he's always taking care of you. There are those who have literally the clothes on your back, their back. But they have the Lord has provided that. So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? Sadly, there are too many people in the world that do have that. They have to go places to find it. And we do try and help with that. We are supplying when available to do. Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things. All those that are not God's children, these are the important things in their life. They don't put God first. They stress about, what do I look like? What should I eat? You know, and then they're certain that st sitting there wondering what should they eat, but however, don't eat a calorie. You're not going to be a size zero if you eat a calorie. <laughs> you can't stand up because you don't eat enough. But your clothes weigh more than you do. There's something wrong with some of these thoughts. Father knows that you will need them, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Very clearly said, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. Reach up to God. If you ever have doubts that cause worries and concerns when you're doing something, well, reach up to him, ask him. Have a conversation with God. He's going to tell you what's going on. He'll tell you what you should do. Sometimes you just have to get into that quiet zone. Turn off all these little sounds and all these little things that are going through your head. You get woke up at 12.30 and you went to bed at 10 and you can't go back to sleep. Do you have your brain just going around and around and around? And it doesn't stop. It's frustrating, it's maddening, and it's exhausting. And that's the devil playing this game. Come on, the other night. Got a few things done, trying not to wake anybody, tiptoeing around. But finally, hey Carla, pull up the Bible. And, you know, he had to actually get this in my head to tell me, read the Bible. So I read a couple chapters. Oddly enough, I was ready to go back to bed. Didn't want to get up one minute. Start, but it's like logic. Yes, you win. <laughs> it's like logic. You just need to listen. Matthew six thirty four, and Jesus' words in the Amplified version. I will not worry or be anxious about tomorrow. Why can't we just? We hear that, see that, read that, know that, and do that. Why do we make it so difficult? I'm already concerned about, you know, a day after tomorrow. But it's the way we're designed. We're designed for God to help us. For tomorrow, we'll have worries and anxieties of its own. And we know that. That's why we're worrying about the day after. Sufficient for each day is its own trouble. So deal with today, because when you get to that next day, have you ever noticed that if you make it a point of saying, that day I'm going to have problems, that day I know it's not going to work, did you notice it works that way? You claimed it? You brought it on. Instead of saying, that day there's not going to be any problems. There's not going to be any worries or anxieties. And anything that might pop up is going to be this big instead of this big. And God's going to take care of it. Oh, I can't get up and go to school or to work tomorrow. I just know it's going to be an awful day. Well, guess what? You're right. It will. It's going to be just awful because you brought it on. It's the power of the mouth brings on most of our problems. It's a terrible thing to say so bluntly, but it's the fact. You know, I've come across people, and, yeah, 
this day is gonna just be awful. And I'm finding that I've always had this problem where my mouth opens and words come out. But you know, sometimes it's better things than others, and I just claim that as well, obviously. And I've come up to the counter where people are working, and they'll say that, and I says, "Well, how about if we turn that around? Today's going to be a great day, just because I want it to be." Look at me. You get a grin. Some actually get a chuckle. Yeah, that could work too. I said, "Give it a try. You'd be surprised how well it does." <laughs> it's helping people realize what they're saying. It makes a big difference what you claim. Your heart is pure of God. You claim nothing but good. <clears throat> Mark 4.19 in Jesus' words. But for the worries of this life, this deceitfulness of wealth, and the desires for the things to come, and the choke the word, and choke the word, making it unfruitful. Hmm. Yeah, you just keep digging the hole and jump in. If you don't stop and think, we all do it. We all, you know, we. I specifically know that I have to make a point of stopping, taking a breath, processing how better to say what I'm thinking, and it helps. And every once in a while, I get reminded it's a little bit negative, Carla. And it's yes, dear. <laughs> But it's true, you know, if I don't get reminded, sometimes it doesn't help me. But that's what we're here to help each other, to grow, learn, fix. 2 Timothy 1, 7. For the Spirit of God gave us, does not make us timid. It's our strength, but gives us power, love, and discipline or self-discipline, excuse me. This is what we use to fight anxiety, depression, fear, Satan. Stomp him away, bring in the Lord, and just ask him, come Lord, replenish me. Take away the fear, give me the strength, build me up. And it does, it does, it grows. It's like a weed in the summertime. Man, they can pop up quicker than anything. That's what we are. We want those to grow in us like the weeds. The only real purpose that a weed has is for a good analogy for services. To grow quickly inside you and to show what it is to do. Fight the anxiety with the power. I have the power of Jesus in me and I'm so grateful. My life is so much better, so much more positive, so much internal wealth gratitude, graciousness, praise the Lord for what he has done for me because he lets me grow, get rid of all the ugly. 1 Peter 3, 13 and 14. Who is going to harm you if you are eager to do good? Hmm. So, who's going to harm you? Who can harm you? You can get flesh wounds. But who's going to harm me internally? Nobody. You've got the breastplate, the shield. Every part of God's armor is on you, except for there is no back. Why? Because you don't run. When you got God, he's got your back and he's covered the front. He's there with you. It's his way of saying, I got you covered. Wear that power. And it's good. But ever if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. You did the right thing. You don't have worries or anxieties. You might have a disappointment, but you know what? That's almost gone already, too. Because when that happens, he's got something else to take its place. So instead of going, oh, man, and all bummed out, remember, there's a reason for this. Everything that happens has a purpose. It has a reason. Do not rear these threats. Do not be frightened. Do not let the devil mess with your head and bring you down. That's all he wants to do is make you miserable and the Lord is here for everything but that. 
every good thing in your life is what the Lord is here for. 1 Peter 5, 6 and 7. Humble yourselves. You know, it's really hard to do that. That's like admitting I made a mistake. Or This is really hard for me to say at times, but I'm wrong. I mean, I have said that over the years in front of the kids, not intentionally. <gasps> Mom, did anybody record that? Did you hear she's wrong? You know, to admit that I made a mistake or I was wrong, I'd always say, well, I just didn't have the correct answer. <laughs> Admittedly, I'm wrong on occasion, as everybody is. But to humble yourself and admit it is a very important start. I'm human. I made a mistake. We all do. Me and I make a lot of mistakes, but that's what it's for. Therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Well, it helps once you start getting humbled. I mean, John, he got humbled pretty good. Or Paul, excuse me. Paul. I mean, the Lord dropped him on his back in the middle of the road and left him blind. Now, how hard do you have to be in the head for God to have to knock you on your backside and blind you to remind you it's time to listen to me and get humbled? I don't want to go down that road. I think I'd rather listen and jump start now and say, humble me. Occasionally I'm wrong. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Now, when it says it cares for you, that's really a very summarized Thing of what he does. He completely loves us, each and every one of us, more than we could ever love him. He is nothing but love. And it gives you a good feeling when you finally think, oh, true love, unquestionable, undoubtable, never wrong love. That's what our God is and does. And when you keep that in you, with all his good thoughts, his good doings, it's so much easier to stay positive and not get frightened and anxious. You have to stop and say, okay, this is the devil. This isn't me. This isn't real. He's messing with me. So Aunt Satan, be gone. Thank you, Jesus, for living in me. Thank you, Lord, for giving me Jesus because now he lives in me where there's room for only good, which is my God. Oh, Father, thank you. We appreciate the words that you put in the Bible, and you put it in there repetitively for us to make sure we understand what it is you want us to have. You are nothing but good, nothing but love. You are our doctor. You are our drivers. You are our everything. We trust in you. We know that you'll take care of us. Just simply say, God, help me. In Jesus' name, amen. If there's ever prayers wanted, you can always call the 701-412-3972 number. You can email the church at churches God, uh, Church of God's Word at Outlook.com. You can look on our website and watch services in the past to help you with whatever the issues may be. And for those that are continuing to question, what should I do? It's simple. If you want to have the Lord in you, it's Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. Please come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. You are now a child of God. You are born again. And you've got a wonderful thing started right now. It's going to grow and make your life better. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. And we have one more song.